Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. Yes, my name is Florian Divis. I'm a senior user experience designer and accessibility advocate at Novum. And together with Werner, for the next 30 to 35 minutes, we'll be talking about accessibility. As said, with me is Werner. Werner, would you like to introduce yourself? Currently unmuted. Hello, everyone. My name is Werner Henke. I'm a senior software engineer and accessibility expert at Adobe. I am visually impaired since birth, uh, almost blind now, and therefore accessibility is a huge topic in my private as well as in my business life. Thanks. Thank you very much. Right, so today's presentation is about accessibility. We'll cover what that is and why it is needed. Uh, later on, you will, may join in our guessing game and to show you some facts and figures. Then Werner will explain what a screen reader is and how he navigates websites with more or less success. Who is responsible for accessibility? How do we do it and when will be the topic right before we wrap up the presentation. And stay tuned for a surprise at the end. But let's start with a little bit of definition of what accessibility actually is. So according to the Wikipedia article, accessibility is the design of products, devices, services, or environments so as to be usable by people with disabilities. They get on and saying that it is strongly related to universal design, which is the process of creating products that are usable by people with the widest possible range of abilities, and together with inclusive design, yet another word for it, it's about making things accessible to all people, whether they have a disability or not. Whether we are talking about accessibility, inclusive design or universal design, it is always about removing barriers and making services, both physical and digital, available to everyone. There are three types of barriers that I would like to point out. Physical barriers typically are missing ramps, but when recently also explained to me that he uses lampposts and other landmarks for orientation. If for a reason those landmarks are different, for instance, when a bike has been chained to a lamppost, this may be very disorienting for him. In the digital realm, missing alt text, alternative text on images, or when a website cannot be used with a keyboard only, is barriers. And saying that people are being disabled by society is sadly often true. Believing that everyone can see, understand, and do the same as oneself is the biggest barrier of all. Missing awareness and empathy is the root cause for inaccessible solutions. There are many types of disabilities. Um, some are more visible, like blindness and mobility disabilities. Most, however, are not visible, like deafness or low vision. And did you know that one in 12 male persons has a color red-green deficiency, what we loosely call color blindness? Learning and speech disabilities are not visible as well. And by far the most common disabilities are cognitive disabilities because they are so diverse. Examples are short-term memory loss or attention deficit. And finally, there are many facets of psychological disabilities that are not visible, like social anxiety or behavioral disorders. Most importantly though, the focus should not be on the disability, but on the people. So yes, it is people that mainly benefit from accessible services, websites, and apps. For people with disabilities, it allows them to go voting, do taxes, go shopping, live an everyday independent and self-fulfilling life. But for them, it's not a nice to have at all. It is essential and can be life-saving. Just imagine a smoke alarm giving only acoustic signals. A hearing impaired person would not hear that. That is why fire alarms also have strobe light. For everybody else, accessibility improves the overall experience because text is larger, has better contrast, and is easier to be read in various conditions. 
Buttons and links are easier to click because they are bigger and have a larger click area. Now, what have people with disabilities in common with everybody else? They are website users. They watch movies on YouTube, attend on course on Udemy, and buy stuff online, which brings me to another group which benefits greatly from accessibility. And that is businesses. Accessibility is good for business. Accessible code is good for search engine optimization. It is more robust and future-proof, which gives you a competitive advantage to other companies. People that can access your services will talk about their positive experience, which improves your image. Allowing more people to use your services simply will lead to more customers and more turnover. And accessible websites are easier to maintain, work on more browsers, and in more screen resolutions. It will reduce support calls and your overall cost. So in conclusion, as you have seen, there are many kinds of disabilities of which most are not visible and accessibility benefits everyone. Now it's your turn. If you can take your smartphone and scan this QR code for a voting game or enter the URL in your browser. I hope you're ready by now. So let's start. Now, how many people worldwide would you think have some kind of disability? You can start voting. Here's your live results. Yes, most of you got it right. One in six persons worldwide has a disability. That's 15% of the worldwide population. One billion people have a disability. In Switzerland, that figure is even higher. It's 18 to 20% of the Swiss population. Now, next, how many persons in Switzerland do you think work actually? What do you think? Wait for a couple of more answers. Okay. Yeah, it's actually more than what you think. It's 66% of the Swiss people that have, that have a disability are in the workforce. And now for the last question. How many websites do you think have accessibility issues? What do you think? Okay, get over to the result. Yes, most of you got that right as well. It's 97% actually. WebAIM um, made a recent study. They um, checked 1 million publicly available websites and found accessibility issues on 97% of them. And I suppose more people with disabilities would work if those would be accessible and as said, these are just the publicly available websites. 
uh, internal tools and applications mainly are not accessible as well. And think of the money those businesses leave on the table. Now, disability affects us all, as you have seen. Now I'd like to hand over to Werner that, to show you how he navigates the website. Werner. Sorry for interruption, Florian. Mm -hmm. um, we have a technical challenge at the moment. Okay. Um, something happened with Werner, so we lost him temporarily. I okay. just talked to him on the phone. He's trying to get into the webinar. Um, okay. He needs some more time. Um, That's okay. We, sorry for that. Um, would it be possible that you might take over um, until we have Werner back? I can just continue and we do the demo afterwards yes please do so thank you okay sorry no folks um we will get to the demo a little bit later thanks okay. thanks Just for your understanding okay so i'll hand them um, go on then so who might be responsible for doing accessibility how do we do it and when um typically that's everyone so it starts with the leadership project management um they can give the topic the right priority, funding and attention. Sales, marketing and key account management can include it in sales activities, include it in, in offerings, be aware of the potential and make the clients aware of it too. Business analysis, requirements engineering, UX design research, um, they should take different abilities into account when gathering and specifying requirements. In the design phase, obviously, there's color, um, follow the standards, annotate designs for accessibility, like for instance, tab order and the behavior that is required to be accessible. Then development should na use native HTML, know when to use ARIA, use um, available tools and, and plugins in the browser. And for testing, um, the easiest thing is to not use the mouse for a while. Test uh, a website or an application with a keyboard only, and maybe to learn, um, use a screen reader. So obviously now it should be, um, everyone can and should be part of an accessible solution. The most important step in the how is being aware and open-minded. Building an accessible application or website can be a daunting task in the beginning. There's a lot of things to learn. So learning about the barriers and how to remedy them is the next step. Here, international standards like the WCAG, ARIA, or ATAC are of invaluable help. They have been published by the W3C, the World Web Consortium. And although WCAG is, not, is named a guideline, it has become an international standard to measure and ensure the right level of accessibility. There are many resources freely available to learn about that. And as you can see in the, in the years, they have been around for quite a while, so there shouldn't be ex an excuse to not use them. Betting on the standard horse is usually a good plan, also for technologies. Old school HTML tags do 90% of the job of providing out of the box keyboard and screen reader accessibility. The challenge here is not to be too creative with JavaScript. There are also many helpful tools or browser plugins that give designers, developers, and testers way to check their websites and applications. So accessibility is a key ingredient in building quality software. Like any difficult to grasp topic, the cost to do it after building, testing, and releasing increases with every step. So do not add it in hindsight. I would treat it like security or usability, which you wouldn't bake into a product once it has been released, right? So planning is really the first phase, training personnel, hire, hiring external consultants and specialists, identifying gaps and requirements, learning from people with disabilities that use your product, do the research before. Designing is more than only user interface and user experience. It's also technical design, checking framework decisions, design systems, and ensuring that components are accessible. 
um, during the implementation, ensuring that developers are aware of the requirements for accessibility, not just the feature itself. Learn about how developers can use browser tools and extensions to ensure accessibility. And testers, as I've mentioned before, should learn how to use a screen reader, use keyboard more, and maybe implement automated accessibility testing. There are loads of things that can be done there. Ideally, make it part of the definition of ready, definition of done if you're using a, a Scrum or, or Agile framework there. Right, so everybody is responsible and everybody can do their share to make uh, solutions accessible to everyone. So before I wrap up, I'd like to check with Cornelia Werner if he's ready to do the demo. Yes, he is. He's back. Yes. Okay. So yes, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mute audio, currently unmuted. So um, sorry about that. Um, I don't know what actually happened. I just um, got uh, lost the connection, but I'm back again. And um, before we start with the demo, I would like uh, to say a few words about screen readers. Um, today, there are screen readers available for almost any or for any major platform such as Windows, um, uh, Mac OS, uh, Linux, iOS, and Android. And I am using uh, Mac with VoiceOver. VoiceOver is integrated uh, into the operating system on the Mac. And screen readers um, are very uh, complex applications. Actually, the term screen reader is somewhat misleading since screen, reader, screen readers actually do much more than just read what's on the screen. So with this said, um, uh, what I would like to do now is um, demonstrate how uh, I would, uh, how a blind person that uses a screen reader actually does some shopping on a website. So at first I will um, turn my, my the volume of, uh, of my screen reader up. So don't worry, it will be very loud. And um, then I share the screen and then we try to, uh, uh, to buy a, a book on, on Barnes and Noble. So let's go with that. Increase system in, 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 increase system volume. So I now try to share the screen. Mute my audio button. Start share. Start share. This will stop others. Continue. Default. Cancel. But this will stop others. Screen. Cancel. Continue. Default. But select a window or an application that you want to share. System dialog. Interact. Basic. One. One. Stop and close button. Close. Basic. Sharing screen list box. Grip in. Desktop one. Share entire screen button. Press desktop one, share and you have started screen share. Now see your screen Florian Divas has stopped screen, 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 screen share. Space with applications. Okay, now I go to Safari. Safari, Safari, at Novum, and your digital business works window and toolbar. I open the website. New tab, smart search field, edit text, it already said A, R, N, unselected. HTTPS colon slash slash www.barnesandnoble.com. Okay, and I probably should make full screen. Vertical, new tab, tab bar, favorites, toolbar, full screen button. Online bookstore, new favorites, tab, new tab, vertical splitter, online bookstore, books, no ebooks, and online bookstore. Okay, now we are on the website and <clears throat> what a blind person usually does, um, uh, he or she tries to, to get an impression of the structure of the website. This means that um, we, there are diff diff different options uh, to navigate. So let's just move a bit around. Previous slide slash item button. Link, shop these magical kids special offers. Visited link, free shipping on orders of $35 or more. So currently I don't know actually um, where I am on the website. I have no idea. 
So I will try um, to find out, um, for example, if I press the tab key. Next slide slash item button. Menu pop-up combo box, search by title, author, keyword, okay. OSBA, navigation. That's probably not bad. Um, I'm here on the search uh, field and I will try to buy a Harry Potter book, which I would like to uh, give to my uh, colleague of mine who has birthday in a few days. So I enter Harry Potter. H A R R here confirm P O T T E R Potter button. And here you hear button and you actually don't have an idea. Um, is it this the search button or does it just clear the, the entry field? So um, I just uh, clicked on it. Press button. So nothing seems to happen. I don't know. So what I try next is I try to locate the, the search results. Control option lock on. Safari busy, busy. Safari is busy. So, um, okay. Now a new page has loaded. Heading level two, just announced Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Okay. Um, here appear to be the search results, but actually um, these were not announced um, as they as they should be announced. Heading level one, Harry Potter. So just Harry Potter and- Heading level two, just announced Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. That's the new um, upcoming release. Visited link, pre-order NOW. So I will try to pre-order it. Press visited let Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the illustrated edition, Harry Potter. Okay, a new page has loaded. Now let's um, try to um, get some more information. Heading level one, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the illustrated edition, Harry Potter, book five, illustrated edition. By link, JK Rowling. Link, Jim K, illustrate. Oh, sorry. Link, Jim K, illustrator. Link, Neil Packer, Illustrator. Collapsed link, no rating value, average rating value is 0 0.05. Red zero reviews, same page link. Heading level two, hardcover. $43.99, $54.99, save 20%. Current price is $43.99, original price is $54.99. You save 20%. Link, view all available formats and editions. Ship this item. Qualifies for free shipping, free shipping tooltip, selected radio button, one of two. Ship this item, qualifies for free shipping. Free shipping tooltip group. Buy online, pick up in store, check availability at nearby stores, dimmed radio button, two of two. Buy online, pick up in store. Link, Bohai's message tooltip, press enter to open the tooltip. Link, check availability at nearby stores. Pre-order button. Sign in to purchase instant pre-order button. Okay, I say pre-order. Press pre-order button. Your order qualifies for free standard shipping. See details, web dialogue, close button. Okay, I'm in a web dialogue. Um, Heading level two, two items. Your order qualifies for free standard shipping. Link, see details. Items successfully added to your cart. Horizontal separator. It is in my shopping cart, obviously. Heading level three, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The elite $43.99. Bye. Link, JK Rowling. Hardcover. $43.99, quantity one, link, view shopping cart. Now I say view shopping cart. Press link, view shopping cart. So for p and Okay, a new page has loaded and I tried to find the shopping cart. Heading level two, order summary. And here it says order summary. So I'm obviously in the, in the, in the shopping cart. Subtotal one item, $43.99, estimated shipping. $18.98, estimated tax, $0.00, order total, colon, $62.97, link, checkout. Now we would like to proceed to the checkout. Pre loading sign and modal image, load sign in our checkout as guest web dialogue, email address, required invalid. Okay, I would try to check out as a guest. Um, One password menu available. Press okay. the down arrow key to select. Control option lock off. One. I will try to navigate through this. Password. One password menu. One password menu with one password locked. Link. Forgot your password? Link. Check out as guest. 
check out as guest. Press link, check out as guest. Safari busy. Safari is busy again. Visited link, HTTPS colon slash slash www.barnesandnoble.com slash. Okay, now let's try to find the... Um... INTL, priority airmail star star, okay. typically arrives in 1350. Here I can obviously check or choose the, the delivery options. Complimentary. INTL, priority airmail star star, typically arrives in 1315 business days. Selected radio button, one INTL, $18.98. Okay. Complimentary, complimentary. INTL express, INTL, $39. These are all the different options. I tried to move over them. End of, end of the items in this group. One, want to change something in this group. Edit card, visited, link, image, title, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The illustrated edition, Harry Potter, book, heading level four, visited, link, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling, hardcover, current prices, quantity, $43 and not, this is a pre-order item, currently scheduled to ship on October, continue button. And I say continue. Press continue button. BNN vertical line checkout, web content. Okay, now um, let's see. Card number star, required invalid data, um, edit text, what new tab button, create a new tab. So... Here, um, name on card star required invalid date one password locked card new tab button. And then vertical line. I'm obviously already in the in the um, uh, on the page where I should enter my credit card uh, information. Actually, I would uh, guess that's uh, that's probably wrong. So uh, I should enter my um, name and address first so let's move. visited link https colon slash end of banner try to move back card number star required invalid data uh, edit text name on card star required in space collapsed space collapse security code star click to open security code use shipping address as billing app email address for order updates star sign me up to receive barnes and noble offers uh, and updates email app use shipping so address as billing address Untaked tick box difficulties here to you uh, click to open security code security code star actually, required invalid data secure edit text with autofill i have difficulties here, here to actually um uh find my way through this um through this order form Security code star, end of space, star, expiration, space, end of space, star, expiration, space, name on card, asterisk, one password, man. name on cards, card number, asterisk, one password, man. one password, card number, star, image discovered, image master cup, image JC, image American X, credit card, credit card, heading level two, shipping option, $18.90, tip INT, heading level for link, edit, heading level plus 414 for Switzerland. Oh, uh, it's already in Zurich, 8,000, Bay Dunderstreet, one, Werner, AD. Okay, my information is already in there. The peers. Um, so uh, then let's move to the credit card information. Card number star required invalid data so edit text. I will enter a fake um, credit card, of course. Um, five, four, zero, zero, MasterCard, 5,400, one, two, three, four, five, four, zero, zero, one, five, six, seven, eight, five, four, zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, nine, zero, zero. Zero, five, four, zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Name on card star. Required invalid okay. data. Edit text. I enter my credit card name. W E R N E R Werner. H A E N G G I. Space collapsed group expiration month less self greater star less slash self greater. So here you um here's something very uh strange uh. Obviously, here I should enter the, the month um, of my expiration date. I don't know what happened. Werner 10, October, okay. collapsed group. Expiration month, less self graders. I didn't get any feedback from the screen reader. So let's move to the year. Space, collapsed group. So expiration year, less self graders are less slash self -grader. I enter um, once again. I hear nothing. So. 10 October 2022 collapsed group. Security code star required invalid data. Secure edit text with okay. autofill menu. Do you yeah. open the autofill I menu? I should enter the security code. Click to open security code tooltip group. Use shipping address as billing address. Unticked tick box. Okay. That's fine. Email address for order updates star required invalid data. Edit text with autofill menu. To open the autofill menu, press the up or down arrow. E R N E R Werner period A A E N G G I 
Werner.H-A-E-N-G-A-D-N-O-V-U-M and no C-H. Werner.H-A-E-N-G-G-A-A-D-N-O-V-U-M.C-H. Insertion at end of text. Email address pay with PayPal button. That's not what I want. Sign me up to receive Barnes & Noble pay with PayPal but continue button. Then I say continue and now um, we can observe um, whether there is uh, uh, an error message that's actually um, read to me. Sorry, we were unable to process your credit card. Please enter a valid card number and try again. So that's actually a um, pretty, uh, pretty good solution um, that the screen reader reads the error message to me. Um, on many websites, I actually uh, don't get even um, an error message or the, the entry fields are marked uh, in, in in a particular color such as red and I don't get any any information what's wrong so this works pretty cool on this website uh, as you have seen um, it's not so easy to uh, shop or on this website although um, some things work pretty pretty good actually others um, are not so uh, accessible but it's kind of a website that probably you know from, from yourself, from your uh, experience. And that's that the problems you encountered here are actually those that um, screen reader users face on a daily basis. So actually this one is um, not very bad, but also not very good. So, um, Yes, I hand it over to, to Flo. Perfect, thank you very much, Ben. I hope, um, well, it's always a, an interesting experience and hope that it is pun intended eye-opening for everyone. So I'll steal your sharing. Zoom.us system doc space with application zoom.us mail. I'm stealing. Zoom floaty press yes, your Safari finder. So and um, yeah, let's wrap it up. Final words before we can answer your questions. So yeah, you have seen that disability comes in many forms. Many are not visible and it affects us all. Uh, it's not just a nice to have. You've seen that it is essential for people with disabilities and it can improve um, usability for everyone and it's actually good business. Everyone in the product life cycle has a responsibility for accessibility. And there are many standards, tools, and resources available. Accessibility is not just a feature, but a critical quality marker and should be part of any project from the get go. Right. Here's a, for a little surprise right at the end. Um, tomorrow is the 11th Global Accessibility Awareness Day. And we from at Novum celebrate that day with a series of articles and a contest where you can win one of five free accessibility assessments. So make a note of that URL. You will get the video as well tomorrow. And uh, check our LinkedIn profile from at Novum as of tomorrow. And you can register for a chance to win. Okay, so I've seen that there are already a couple of questions. Um, so uh, I start at the top maybe. Uh, so Noemi Mula asked, what is um, a free screen reader that is good for testing accessibility, which is the best option? Werner, that may be one for you. Who's currently unmuted? Window. Um, actually, most in Switzerland, most screen reader users uh, probably use JAWS. That's a um, commercial screen reader for Windows. And um, I think uh, it's probably a good idea to use JAWS for screen reader testing. Also, a good idea is to use NVDA, which is a, an open source screen reader for Windows. But um, I personally prefer uh, voiceover on Mac OS. Um, and I think in my opinion, the differences are not so big. So I would say 
if you really uh, want to do screen reader testing, then use JAWS or NVDA on Windows and use um, VoiceOver on the Mac. Okay, perfect answer. Uh, the next one is a bit more tricky. Um, so there's someone using Google Forms for uh, registering and also Google Forms for surveys after the event. And apparently Google Forms is not so accessible. So do you have any experience then with a more accessible tools for forms? Um, experience is probably not the right word. Uh, I use SurveyMonkey. I used also um, Google Forms in the past. And um, I think SurveyMonkey is, uh, is, is actually pretty accessible. Um, but um, I'm, I'm not really an expert uh, to decide about this. But you were able to use um, Sorry Monkey as well yes. as Google Forms in that case. Yes, yes. Yeah. I used it uh, um, in order to create forms and also um, to participate in surveys. So uh, it worked more or less, um, not perfectly, but uh, more or less okay. Okay. Right. And yes, there's another question. Yes, we have focused on websites. That's true. Um, the person asks about apps as well. So um, making a native app for the broad public, what should we focus on regarding accessibility? This is maybe one I can answer. Um, so as Werner said, iOS and also Android have uh, like a very good implementation of native accessibility. Um, there are many, well, if you do the iOS version, um, Xcode has many accessibility testing tools integrated into the development environment. And what, what my experience is sometimes that uh, developers like to take a shortcut in doing like bridge technology, technologies, hybrid technologies, and building uh, the same code base and then just deploying it on both platforms like Android and iOS. And the thing is that those hybrid technologies like uh, Xamarin or uh, native script, they usually don't support accessibility to 100%. So you will have to fall back to the native implementations for those platforms. But um, it's absolutely possible and both platforms do do accessibility quite well from the get go if you use native technologies. Um, yeah, there's another question. Uh, is there a website that you can send a URL to scan, scan for accessibility? Um, there is, but I would rather suggest to you that you um, find the X tool, which is a, a browser plugin for Firefox and Chrome. Uh, which helps you assessing in a first step uh, the accessibility of a website. So AX tool is AXE um, by DQ, and they do a really good job in assessing uh, a website. But mind you, it's really just an automated testing. So uh, automated testing never gets all the accessibility issues. We're talking about maybe 30 to a maximum of 50%. Maybe the markets, marketeers tell you something differently, but usually it's 30 to 50% that gets uh, the, the accessibility issues. You won't come around testing either with a screen reader manually or having usability tests with people who use a screen reader professionally like Werner. Okay, are there any other questions? Doesn't seem so right at the moment. So if you have any questions later on, you can reach out to us.